Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. Uh, so this is the fourth video in my Pi Game programming series, and in today's video, we're going to be going over optimization. So pretty much, uh, if you remember from the last tutorial, we have our little guy here. He walks around the screen, jumps up in the air, and he's got a nice little animation, and everything looks pretty good. He can jump, he can run, and if we get to the border of the screen here, he stops, like so. Now, this is all great. Uh, but if we look at our code here, everything seems to look fine, everything looks pretty clean, but as we continue on with our game, this is going to become very, very messy. So for our purposes right now, just with a very small game, we just have a character running around the screen, this doesn't seem like it's an issue. But as we move forward, we want to make sure that everything's neat and compact so that we can make sure our game runs smoothly and everything's clean and we're able to access everything again. So. In today's video, what I'm going to be doing is pretty much changing this into an object oriented approach. Now, it is to be noted that everything you can do object oriented, you can do without that. So, for example, right now we have a non object oriented approach to a game where we have a bunch of variables up here, and these define our character, and these are pretty much the attributes or the characteristics of our character. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to put them into a class so that we're going to be able to access them easier, it's going to look a lot cleaner, and we're going to be able to clean up this redraw game window function, which is going to become messier as we move on with our program. Now you guys are going to be mad at me because I'm going to be telling you to change a lot of the stuff that we already have, but trust me, it's worth it, it's very important, and this needs to be done in order for us to get to a better game and to move forward with the tutorials. Now if you don't want to do this, you're like, I don't really want to type it, I already have this all, uh, pretty much I'll just, just go down to my GitHub link down below, Download the file and you can skip to the next tutorial. Uh, if you really don't want to understand how all that works, that's fine. It's not too complex. If you already understand classes and objects, just go download that. However, if you don't understand that and you want to understand why we're making this class and how everything works, I'm going to be talking about it in depth here. So stick around for the video in that case. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually create a class called our, well, we'll call it player. So in this case, we're just going to type class player inside here you can type object you don't have to do this i just like to do it and then we're going to create our initialization function like so now again if you don't know uh how classes and objects work i do have a tutorial on this in my pi game program or in just my python programming series so you might want to go check that one out first okay so now we're going to make so we have to type an x y width height to define our character and in here we'll just do self dot x equals x self dot y equals y oops and then we'll have self dot width equals width and self dot height equals height like so okay so these are our four main characteristics but remember we do actually need to put in the rest of these variables here uh, because we're going to use those as well inside of our class so we're going to just do self dot vel We'll set that equal to five. Do self dot is jump. Set that equal to false. Oops. Self dot jump count. Set this one equal to ten again. We're pretty much just copying whatever we have here, and we're just putting self before it so that it's an attribute of the class, like so. And self dot right equals right or equals false. Sorry. And then last one, self dot walk count equals zero, like so. So now that we have these in here, we can delete these variables here. And already our program's looking a little bit cleaner. We've got rid of a bunch of the global variables there. And now they're all an attribute of the class. So now another thing that we're gonna have to do here, since we've gotten rid of those global variables, is we're gonna have to change uh, a lot of stuff in here. So the first thing is we need to create an instance of our character. So this instance is going to be what we use to reference, for example, is x, is y, um, and they're going to, it's going to create all these default values on our character. The same thing as if we had just had typed this, all of this outside uh, as a global variable like we had before. So in this case, I'm just going to call my, my character man. You can give him a name and give him Billy, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call him. Um, and just make him an instance of the player class and you have to give him an x, y width and height. So in this case, we'll just give him an x of 300 maybe a y of 410 and then we need 64 and 64 because that's the dimension of our sprite now after we do this uh we're gonna have to change a lot of variables in here so i know this is really annoying and it's gonna take a long time but pretty much 
just go to wherever you see a variable that would have been a global variable before that we changed to an attribute and you're just going to put man dot before it yes i know this is tedious uh but trust me it is important and we do need to do this i apologize that i didn't just do it object oriented right away but i wanted to show you guys that we can do it in both both approaches in both ways and for a small game it might not make sense to make things as an object but for a large game like the one that we're going to probably be doing here where we're going to have multiple objects multiple classes uh, we don't want to clog up our while loop with a ton of, uh, and we don't want to have a ton of global variables. It's just going to make it harder. And you'll see what I mean when we go into creating a block in the next tutorial. Uh, we don't want to have a ton of variables for each of those blocks, pretty much. We just want to have attributes attached to a class. So we're just going to keep going through this. We should be close to done. Uh, now, I definitely probably missed uh, one of these mans before something. So if when we run the program it crashes, uh, don't get mad at me. And we'll do man dot y, man dot jump count. Uh, same thing here. Man and man. Now let's just do a quick check through here to see if we forgot anything. We look to be okay for right now. And yeah, I think we're okay. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to run the program here, and we're just going to make sure that everything's working okay. And we've got an error. Name walk count is not defined. Oh, okay, so I forgot to do the function here, of course. So again, in here, we're just, uh, we're actually going to change this to self because we're going to do something cool with this function. So rather than having all this checking inside here, let's just check it inside of the character. So I'm just going to copy all this code right here. So I just cut it out. And then inside of our character here, we're going to have a method that we're going to define as uh, draw. So pretty much now, whenever we want to draw our character, all we have to do is just call player.draw or man.draw, uh, give it the, uh, what do you call it, the argument of the window. And then we can do all of this in here, except uh, so it cleans up our function because we're going to be drawing a lot more stuff inside of this function. So we don't want to have unnecessary code in there. Now again, in here, we're gonna have to make these all self. I know it's annoying, but we're gonna have to change all these things to self. We can leave uh, this walk left variable up at the top, that's fine. And we'll just keep changing everything. And I promise you this is important, otherwise I wouldn't be making you guys do it. Self, self, self. And we're almost done self.x, self.y. Now we need to, just need to go in here and we're going to call man.draw win. We can get rid of this global right here and we should be all good. Let's run the program. Draw takes one positional argument. I forgot something here. My apologies. We need the self. And let's run the program. All right, there we go. And you can see we have the exact same result as last time except now all of our code is clean and ready for uh, more stuff to be added to it. So pretty much uh, I'll go through it quickly because I know I went kind of fast through that. What we've done essentially is we've just put everything into a class. So this is our player class. And again, this could be used for multiple players. So for example, if you were gonna do a multiplayer game, you probably wouldn't make a global variable outside of the class like here and you'd say like x1, x2, y1, y2 is jump one is jump two you get the point we don't want to do that because that's going to use a ton of different variables here and it's going to be a lot of typing and especially if we're going to have something like blocks that we're going to be jumping over top of or enemies possibly we don't want to make a ton of different variables for each individual enemy when we can just use a class and just create a new instance of that class so here we have our player class we have all of the attributes the same as the variables we had before and now we have this little draw method which essentially just does the exact same thing we had inside of here, except now it can be accessed a lot easier by just calling man.draw. Again, this is where we instantiate the class or the object. Uh, you can create, you can change this if you want to whatever position. And yeah, we've just changed everything to man. So I know this was tedious um, and this was kind of a waste of a tutorial video in my opinion, but this really did need to be done. And I just wanted to show you guys that we can do it in two different ways. So no matter, uh, how you make a game there will be people out there watching tutorials that are going to make games doing the way we did before where you just have x1 
or you have x, y, all the different variables and you don't use any classes, and that's perfectly fine. But as soon as we start moving into large games or more complex games, we definitely do need to use these classes as it just makes everything a lot cleaner. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video.